We are on a special journey of faith together, drawing closer to God, getting to know Him better and love Him more. In the first commandment, God identifies Himself to the world as the one true God. It's not enough to know that one true God exists. We need to get to know Him, what He's like, what He desires, how we can relate to Him in good and positive ways. How do you get to know someone? An important part is getting to know their name. A person's name is more than just the words people use to identify you, like your first, middle, and last names. Your name also includes your reputation. The same is true for God. That's why God is concerned about protecting his name, his reputation, in the second commandment. He wants to guard his reputation so that all people can get to know him for who he really is and what he's really like. Consider this scene. Senator Trickster is giving a press conference. Pay special attention to how the senator uses God's name as he talks with the reporters. The voting record of former Senator Loophole suggests that public opinion is not important and getting elected is just a meal ticket. How can you convince us you are different? That is a great question. And let me tell you, the good people of this state can count on me to represent them and their concerns to the best of my ability, I swear to God that my voting record will directly represent the fine constituents of my state. I swear to God. Senator Trickster, there are published reports that you are merely using the office of Senator as a stepping stone to the presidency. Can you respond to that? I appreciate the opportunity to respond to such a distortion of the facts. I am both honored am privileged to be a United States Senator, and that absolutely no thoughts of running for president, as God is my witness. Senator, various unnamed sources are charging you, charging that you currently under investigation for misusing campaign finances for the purpose of repairing your UFO, so you may take back all you learned to the mothership and use it to kill, maim, and destroy planet Earth. Would you care to elaborate? Dear God, I resent that. Let's be serious for a moment. Let's just say if I were to misuse campaign finances, I wouldn't use them to rebuild my UFO. I, I, I mean, my alleged UFO. People, please. A person would be much smarter to launder the finances produce phony receipts, and put the money in high-risk Central American mutual funds. I cannot believe the imagination of some of your colleagues today. Dear God. Senator, Senator, sir, these uncorroborated sources also claim that you were raised by a pack of wolves and were, and when a reporter in Boston cornered you on the subject, you, you pounced and held him by the neck, licking his face. First, Senator, you were raised by wolves, and second, will that incident have any impact on the, your voting for or against the Wildlife Reform Act? God bless America. I have never heard anything so ludicrous in my entire life. I mean, just because a man happens to love spending time in the great outdoors, loaded down with fur, marking his property, does that mean he will vote against the Wildlife Reform Act? Look, people, I'm kind of on a schedule here, so we'll take one more question, okay? Thank you, Senator. You and I see the same suck, and I feel in your karma that you have a distinct knowledge of the real whereabouts of Elvis Presser. Sir, is this true? And are you an ardent supporter of the bill to abolish government involvement in labor disputes? For the love of all things holy, I can't believe this line of questioning. I will say it just one more time. So help me God, if I'm tricking you, may God strike me dead.
from the way Senator Trickster used God's name. You have a positive impression of God, wanting to get to know the Lord more? Or did the Senator's use of God's name give you a more negative impression of God? Think about your name. It doesn't just identify you, it calls to people's minds important things about you and the kind of person that you are. For example, when you hear the name Abraham Lincoln, you might think of things like U.S. President during the Civil War, how he wore a stovepipe hat, or the fact that he signed the Emancipation Proclamation of Freeing Slaves. Something similar is true when we talk about God's name. It's not just what he's called, but also what he's famous for. In fact, God's name is not only every expression he uses to refer to himself, like God or Lord or Jesus. It's also everything that God has revealed about himself in his word. For example, think about all the things God says about himself in a passage like Exodus chapter 34, verses 6 and 7. The Lord. The Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands, and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. These verses not only tell us some of the formal names by which we can identify and call out to God, They also reveal wonderful truths about the kind of God he is. Compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, forgiving, but also just. So with all those wonderful things that are included in God's name, I want you to answer this question. Why do you think it's so important for us to use God's name in a proper way and not a careless way?